everybody, welcome back to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave, and today we're gonna to dive into a scene that one of you has sent to me to review. Now this person sent me an email and said, hey, I'm having an issue with some of my inputs where I have to keep them turned up all the way going to my live stream mix bus. Why is it that it's only on certain instruments and not on all of the instruments? So let's dive into the scene. Let's see what he's got. Let's see what we can look at. We're gonna jump into X32 edit, poke around and see what we can find out. Let's do it together. So to start off, I'm just gonna look in here and I'm gonna just take a quick peek at, uh, at the layout here. We've got uh, some vocals, it looks like. We've got uh, keys. Uh, we've got some different guitars, some blank channels. Looks like two DCAs, one for vocals, one for instruments. Let's look at 17 to 32. Looks like we have bass and then drums and that drums is just one channel. It's a mono channel for drums. It's interesting. Let's look at our aux and effects. So we've got a little PC coming in and then we've got our effects. It does look like they've got a reverb, a reverb, and a delay. And let's check the buses as well, just to give us a full picture of what's going on. So I just see a couple buses that maybe have faders up and a live stream stereo pair here on three and four. So that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't see any matrices being used, no matrix being used on this. And I can also tell that my sends, my, uh, my buses are not sending into any matrix. One of the things I note right away is that we have our, uh, our, our stereo bus, our live stream bus, the volume is turned way down pretty, pretty considerably. Uh, that could play a part in it. We'll wanna check and make sure that it is set up as a post fader send out of the console. So we'll need to check our routing and see where that's sending. But seeing that that fader is turned down, we wanna just check further settings into that because we may be able to utilize that to, uh, to kind of offset the issues that he's having. But let's look at some of the mix going into this live stream mix bus. So let's jump back to the inputs. So one to 16, we're looking on the right hand side here at the main left and right mix. But if I look at the stream, I look at that stream and I see that this ST guitar, we'll call it steel guitar. That's me assuming things though. The steel guitar is turned all the way up. But if we go back to the main mix, I did notice as well, if you look at all of our faders here for uh, the regular instruments, the mix to the left and right house, I see that this steel guitar is turned up considerably louder than everybody else. Not sure what's causing that. That could just be an input gain. Um, if it's a steel guitar, I don't know much about those, but if there's a gain before feedback type scenario, then we may need to address that, whether it's positioning you know, better behind the PA, that we can get more gain out of that instrument before any potential feedback. If they're near a monitor, can we adjust that monitor? Those are things to consider. But let's also look up top. So our, you know, our, our inputs over here on what are potentially dynamic mics, we've got 29 and a half as a gain, 24 and a half, 31. They seem pretty consistent. The steel guitar is plus 19. So I'm wondering, you know, I don't know what this, what is on this guitar, if it is mic'd or if it's direct in, is there potentially a pad? Uh, I get, well, yeah, is there a pad maybe turned on somewhere? Maybe a DI box? I don't know. But I do see that there's more room potentially to get gain into the console, therefore turning this fader down some but if this is your house mix, if this mix sounds good in the house, then why change it, okay? Um, if we look at our stream bus now, jump into the stream bus, I do see a lot of my inputs here at Unity. So they're taking, 
you know, a, a slightly altered mix, but that looks pretty standard. And then here's a steel guitar cranked up plus 10 all the way maxed out. That's probably what he wrote me about. Let's keep going though. Let's jump back to the main mix. Let's look at the next inputs. So here's bass and drums. Drums are also a little louder here uh, than, than the bass and the other instruments. And that does look like a considerable jump for the drums as well. So again, not knowing what kind of inputs coming into, I have no idea what this drums, it says drums, is it just one drum? Is it a cajon? Is it, um, is it congas? You know, is it just one like SM58 over top of, uh, over top of drums? I'm not sure. When we look at the gain on this mic, it is at plus 36, which is comparable to the other microphones that we saw, still doesn't tell us enough context. So we've got some questions to send back to this person. I do like that the DCAs are at Unity. That rules out any potential of like, this one instrument is stuck on a DCA that I didn't know about, and it's really low and cranked down, and that's your issue. But let's go back and talk about what I think we could do. <clears throat> If we go back to the main left and right mix, and I see my input faders are really low on bass and drums, and even all of these other instruments, they are really low except for the steel guitar. Is there the possibility that, that we can get more gain into the board from the steel guitar? Uh, I don't know. I also wonder if the um, if the PA is set right, but we're not looking at the PA, we're looking at just the live stream mix. And when we look at the live stream and we see that a lot of these faders are at Unity, here's the next thing that I think could be a good game changer. So we're at a plus 10 decibel increase on this one instrument over the others. Can we find 10 dB? somewhere else that then we turn these other instruments down and we can bring this one down but use something else to turn our entire mix up giving us more headroom to be able to build a better mix it doesn't go into the fact of why this one instrument is having to be cranked up specifically uh, but it does give us the ability to look at other things. So let's go back and now look at the routing. We talked about this earlier, but let's go just kind of clear back to the main left, right. Let's go look at our routing. And if we look at inputs, inputs I see are all local. So this to me makes me think that this is a full size X32 console. All 32 inputs are available on the back of the board, not using an S16 or a stage box. When I look at uh, card, I see that card, this is just more of a curiosity that I noticed earlier, but card has user outs one through eight doubled up for the first 16 channels, and then they regroup on 17 through 32. I'm not sure about that. Also not gonna be asking him about the outputs there specifically, but Let's keep going. XLRs, XLR outputs are straight one through 16. So that's on the back of the board, the physical connections on the board. Now we get to the interesting part. Let's look at the outs, because we have to set outs and then tell them where they're going. We can put those into multiple different locations. A lot of these first channels are set as direct outs. Uh, so they would be physically just kind of looping through the console and going back out you see pre-fader and pre, uh, pre plus the mute going out to these, uh, these specific outputs of the console. When we come down, we see a little bit more standard look of the, uh, of the mix buses, but still looks like it's had some, some time getting set up here. So stream left is going out here. We've got another output for stream left. Then we have stream right. Then we have random mix bus 12 sitting there. Then we have stream left again, and then off, and then we've got the main left and right. This further tells me that we're using that 15 and 16 for the outputs, which leads me to believe this is a full-size console. A lot of this poking around seems like it might have been done 
just as, uh, as trying to figure things out, trying to get life squared away. I'm sure you can relate to that at some point in your mixing career. I want to look at the aux outs next. Aux outs could tell us a different story. And when I see this, I see uh, aux one is an insert, uh, aux two, yeah, this, just, just on the left and right, I don't know if they're really aware of what those are doing or how they're functioning, but they are set up there, and I don't think they're gonna impact what we need to find out. Let's go back and look at these aux outs now. These, uh, these outputs down here are post fader for the stream. Let's assume that they're taking a signal from the, uh, from the output 12, uh, 10 and 11, excuse me, output 10 and 11, and we're taking those, the stream left and stream right, and we're sending that out of the console through XLRs. If so, this is great. Let's go take a peek at the user outs because we did see some user outs set up. And when I look at user outs, all I see here is that Mixbus 3 and 4, so that is the live stream, is being captured post fader and being sent out of the console across USB. So this person might be using USB to, uh, to send their mix because again, bus three and four uh, are, are the ones in concern. So output one through 16, we go back to this view and let's figure out what we've got here. The USB is sending the mix bus out post fader. Also, the XLRs on the back of the console are sending that live stream mix out. Um, it happens to be output 10 and 11. It doesn't really matter which ones you're using, but that stereo pair is leaving also post fader. This is important because when we look at the faders, let's go down here to the bus mix. We do see that our live stream bus is turned down minus 13, almost minus 14 decibels. So we know that in subtractive mixing, we can turn things way down. We have more flexibility to turn them down in smaller increments than we do to turn them up. My suggestion back to this viewer is going to be to turn this uh, mix bus output up to unity. That's gonna gain us 14 decibels of headroom. We can then go back to our mix. And if we look at our mix, here, we can take everything down, say, 14 decibels, getting this steel guitar closer to Unity, if maybe not even below Unity, everything else can come down those similar 14 decibels, and that puts you at a better place to have a headroom where you, if the steel guitar needs to be louder, he can't get any louder right now. That opens it up for that possibility. The other thing I noticed is when I go back to the buses, let's go over here to buses. We do have an effect inserted and let's look at the channel. So we'll select the mix bus, we'll look at channel. And here we have an insert effect. That insert effect is the uh, precision limiter and that's fine. But it's the limiter is coming in before any equalizing or compressing. So the next thing I wanna look at is the uh, precision limiter. Let's take a peek there and let's pull up the limiter. So the limiter is doing just some basic limiting. So I see they're only pushing it up plus uh, 0.5 and they have a zero dB ceiling out there. Typically I run my ceiling at minus one or minus 0.5, but minus one is usually where I run it. That helps to just bridge any, any gap in translation from analog to digital across the spectrum that it may hit before the viewer actually gets to see the, you know, hear the product. But I would love to take this, come back to the channel and just move this to be post EQ if you will. So right here, the insert is set to pre. I'd like to click that and move it to post. That allows me to do all of my EQing, all of my tonal changes 
and then just take that whole signal and bump it up. That way I don't have any possibility of getting uh, any, you know, any issues or artifacts that come from the EQ that I see. If we limit it and then we start adding EQ on top of it, it's kind of defeating the purpose a little bit. We have some other things we could do though in here with using compression just to kind of glue things together before it hits the limiter and goes out to that final uh, live stream destination. But the biggest things outside of those suggestions that I see when I look at this is I'm wondering what type of input is coming into this steel guitar. I'm guessing that that's what it is, but channel 12, uh, what is the input actually looking like? Can they get any more input gain without any feedback? And also with their drums down here on channel 18, 19, whatever it is, can they uh, can they get more input gain out of that as well? Each situation is different. Your situation is different than this one. And taking a look at this together may help you get some ideas about changes you could make into your environment. I don't know. But this is my quick look at what's going on with this person's scene. I'm going to send back an email with, with some suggestions and, uh, and some questions and see if we can help them out further. But I hope you found value in this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button and uh, subscribe button. Maybe share this with somebody else on your team or that you think might find this beneficial. Well, that's it for this video. We'll catch you next time. Peace.